Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm very happy. <laughs> uh, I have got a real gem. This is a well, I tell you, I've been looking for one of these for a long time. You all know what it is, it's in the titles. It's a metal planer. This is a I think it's a Henry Milner's. All I can tell you is this is over hundred years old. Uh, about 1910, I think it was, that these were being offered. Uh, it's currently in a few pieces because it's it was quite heavy. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, pop it up on a bench. You'll notice it's a slightly different view today. Uh, I'm beginning. Why well, I haven't posted many videos and why well, I put my burner project on hold. I am beginning to sort out the floor in my big shed, which involves moving all the big machines the deal was in my mind I could get some upgraded machines in for when I go into the bigger workshop the problem was I had told myself I wouldn't fill the workshop up until it was finished but it's full it's not finished so I'm having to clear space up in this shed to move the big machines and everything out because in a month or so's time I need to have all the prep work done in that shed to pour a self leveling compound. Hence the space out here. Okay, let's, uh, let's get this up on this bench in its various components. Oops. Tea, coffee, cakes, woodwork lathe, anyone, you know. Okie dokie, let's take the gantry up here first. As always with anything old, it weighs a ton. Here's the heavy bit. Okay, got a few, <sighs> got a few bits down here. I've moved this thing around so many times today; it's killing me. So, let's bring you down and show you what it is and what we got here. Oh, can we see? Yep. I think I should have paid more attention when the person took it apart. So this is my hand planer. This is in as bought condition at the moment. Uh, I was under the impression everything was here apart from the lever for running it. But there's quite a few missing nuts and bolts and small, small bits of uh, Hardware, nothing major. The auto feed mechanism is 90% complete at least, or maybe 80% actually. Uh, the clapper box is complete, and everything moves nice and smoothly. Granted, you can tell uh, the bloke said he'd used this, but clearly it was never used. Uh, it's just it's going to need a good clean up. The paintwork on it's fine. I'll keep all the original paint. There's no there's no wear on this machine. There is, however, a bit of a 
boo boo on the bed. I'll show you that. Uh, can, you, can you see this? It's not very deep. A bit deeper up that end. That's just oil. Um, and there's only one piece of damage to any of the castings and that's this tiny little piece off this corner which is no big deal at all gotta admit I love the gantry adjustment and the actual uh, if I can get Oh no, I can't get hold of it to move it really. But the bed moves nice and smooth. Uh, defining features on this the feet are removable and there is a gap through here. The back of the gantry has a couple of apertures on the uprights. It's three slots on the bed. And the clapper box is of like an enclosed, fully enclosed design with three bolts. I'm going to place this video up because uh, I've been on Laves UK and there are some photographs. There's nothing really uh, clear enough for me to know what is and isn't here. There might be a few little bits missing. It is over 100 years old. Now, I wonder if anyone out there knows where I can get some drawings or some really good photographs to show me both sides of the machine. I'd like to see the other side of the crank, what the actual handle looked like, and all the um, auto feed mechanism. Because it's only really the auto feed that's got anything missing, the rest of it is 100% complete. It's no biggie, I suppose I can live without auto feed, but it would be nice, you know. I've got to hand operate this anyway. Uh, plans for this, this little gem, will be. It's to look cool. <laughs> Seriously, like, I bought it just because I've, I've wanted one for a long time, and uh, just put it back on the stand. these don't come up too often no more I've been looking for a long time whilst I found a shaper pretty easy um, I would like a hand shaper like a hand operated one just just as a to have it basically um, and that's what this is this is a conversation piece maybe I don't know my friend already says like it belongs in a museum I've always liked the look of them I love their function and I also like the fact that you've got all this working area in such a small package. Very small package with this one. Ideally I would have liked something with at least mm, four feet, four foot long bed and maybe 18 inches to two foot wide. That would have been my perfect size with power feet. I don't want to sit there all day long like winding it back and forth. But this is more of a curiosity and interest and it's just a wonderful old piece of machine really don't see too often. That being said, I do have jobs planned. I'm hoping to be able to make use of this for and maybe do a few videos for people. Simple things like um, parallels, you know, see how accurate this is. And maybe I can make some really nice parallels up because I've only got a set of four inch parallels. And they were very expensive. And uh, my 1ES mill uses, I, I might doesn't use, I like to use a 6 inch vice on my 1ES mill. And my Victoria mill, which I haven't yet restored and has actually got to come up in this lean to, I've got, uh, I think that's an 8 or a 9 inch Abwood vice, a uh, very big, heavy. Vice, uh, wonderful, wonderful piece of iron. So, I would like to make some six and eight inch parallels. 
I'm pretty sure the travel on this is 225 millimeters back and forth and under the bottom of the gantry, not the clapper box but the bottom of the gantry is 175 millimeters maximum clearance I believe that's still a fair size for, for such a small machine, such a small footprint this can almost machine the same size block of metal as my uh, 10 inch shaper and that's massive and is about half a ton 400 kilos it's heavy a lot heavier and bigger than this so another nice feature and just thinking about it this is something I could let my kids use and not worry about them really you know hitting the button and smashing everything to pieces when they're learning the basics of machining I think I've gone a bit off topic but if anyone can guide me in a direction of some very clear photographs at the very least of what everything's meant to look like clearly so as I can at least you know use what I have here for scale and make up some drawings it would have been lovely to have had everything original but as I've looked over it there's a few nuts and bolts in the main body like what's holding the feet on aren't the original they're too shiny uh, there's a hexagon allen key uh, nut and bolt here uh, they're, they're nothing too major I've got loads and loads of imperial hardware stored in my other shed tens of thousands of pieces so I will probably have a few spares kicking around that I can use as I would like to have this as a showpiece and to be showpiece mm. working museum piece <laughs> I would like to have this as a piece that's as close to authentic and original as possible due to its age and it is kind of like hen's teeth, it's rocking horse poo. I've I've never seen one available in England before in the last five years roughly. I've kept a keen eye out on like Facebook and eBay. Granted at times I have I have like not looked for a few weeks, so maybe one might have slipped by. But typically you can't find these, especially here in England. Yeah, so um, anyway, I'm very, very pleased. Very pleased. I am like kidding, kid at Christmas right now. While some men like fast cars, other men maybe old cars. I like old machines. For me, this this is, you know, uh, you can tell I'm just grinning my head off since I've got it. Uh, and it was only a mile away from my house. A mile away. And it's definitely got the cool factor about it, it's got that wow factor. Uh, mechanical motion, gears, you know, lead screws. There's no, there's no, you know, uh, what do they call them, stepper motors or servo motors on this. This is, this is back when tools were made by men and used by men. So as you can see, this side is complete. The handle is missing. Uh, I would like to find a handle, at least get some pictures, like I said, some pictures of both sides, of all angles of the machine, if possible. If anyone can get me some photographs of one of these complete, I would be very, very appreciative, as I could do with something for reference to make some parts up for this. I'd like to uh, make some parallels, like I said, on it. Uh, other various silly things. I may, I may even have a couple of um, straight edges that could be, because they're really old and pitted and rusty. Uh, I was given them by a friend out of his scrap van. I may be able to trim them up because they're only about 12 inch. I may be able to trim them up on this. So yeah, just lots of little fun novelty projects are what I have planned for this and I will do my best to film them for everyone because I love watching videos with people using shapers and planers yeah probably more than I like watching just people like manual milling uh, I, I... 
watching this back, I've just realised how many times I stop and just sit there gawping at this thing. And I've had to edit out where I've just gone quiet and started fiddling. <laughs> So I'm playing, uh, hoping to at least be able to maybe go get one of my uh, cast iron hand wheels and pop a keyway on it. But there's no, there's too many pieces really missing off this for me to want to start to even attempt to make a few cuts with it. I'd rather get everything together and make sure I've got everything together as it should be. And I hope to bring some projects to you. Well, the first thing I'll do with it is I'm gonna fully strip it down clean everything up uh, the ways are actually they're, they're, they're not even worn so it's going to be a case of strip it down, clean it up find, fix remake any parts that are missing and then I'm going to make a few novelty projects on it like I said parallels and straight edges etc just silly things uh, this is going to be more of a guilty pleasure then you know something that is going to be a workhorse in my workshop this is going to be for therapy on days when you don't know what you want to do but you want to go outside and you want to play I'm going to come out and I'm going to scrape bits of metal square and straight and put grooves in them and slots in them and you know batch out tea nuts or something it's just going to be for days when it's more a case of being out here is what's important, not so much what you're making out here, it's just... <laughs> it's the journey, not the destination. There we go. Thank you for watching everyone. Um, take care and I'll catch you on the next one.